My name is Victor Kidson. I'm here in Swindon with Nick Tuckett and Dan Willis, who have set out to make a difference in this world through dance music. How are you guys doing today? Uh, good. I just had a big steak and I'm a bit full, but apart from that, all good. How are you doing, Dan? I'm nice good. Again, it's good to see you again. Good to see you guys too. Yeah. And I'm happy that we get to talk about uh, this some more. Mm, this even though I know some of this stuff, or we've talked about it before, I'm still very interested in, in how it's going to work out. Yeah. Thank it's you just for, exciting. Yeah, thank you for making the effort to do this interview. We appreciate it. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Where did the idea come from to, to create the Apollo 8 Foundation? Um, kind of came as a joint yeah. venture. Dan, I've known Dan for, for a few years and he's always wanted to do more and, get, and give back to charities and help people uh, through pretty much any way he can. And he came up with this idea, it was in December a couple of years ago, I think it was, and I was in Poland with my girlfriend uh, at a Christmas market, and my phone just started exploding with messages, going, what about this, what about that? And I spent the whole of this bus tour we were on just texting <laughs> back, back and forth, kind of like throwing out the, the wildest ideas for what we, what we could do with this concept. And the, the simple concept was um, taken from uh, inspiration from people like Above and Beyond, yeah. who donate one gig per year, to the uh, is it the Global Poverty Project? I believe. Yeah. Yeah. The, so, kind of, we, we we took that concept of an artist giving a gig per year to a charity, and just thought, why can't we expand that across the entire industry? Kind of unite that the industry with the artist and the fans together, and really make a difference with giving back. Cause like, look at dance music industry. There's, there's billions uh, globally. It's it's a real global business. It's growing year on year on year, and as far as we can see from what we've looked at, there's no global or big effort as a, as a whole to give back to, mm. to, the, to people that need help or to just end any sort of charitable effort that we can think of. Yeah. Just, and how were your ideas, ideas received by Nick, the first ones? Um, really well, actually. Like, obviously, it was, it, what started off is just the concept, really, of, you know, hey, if if artists at certain levels can give back with doing a couple of gigs, you know, for instance, myself I've been involved in some charity shows and consider ourselves quite low down in the industry in terms of, you know, the us versus where say above and beyond are kind of thing. If, if we can do it here and above and beyond can do it there, then that gap in between can be filled by all those other artists that could potentially give one gig per year or do something to, you know, to give back on a, on a bigger scale. So. Once we really kind of agreed on that principle that it was open for every artist to be part of, um, we sort of developed it more and it took us about a year to get to where we are now. Um, yeah. Picking up a really good team of people that liked the vision and liked the foundation and yeah. wanted to join on board and support and help in the areas of their skills, for instance, marketing and social media expertise. Yeah, we've got a good team of people who kind of bought into what we were trying to achieve and just, yeah, just just believed in what we're trying to do is, is first of all, a good idea and achievable. Um, and yeah, we've, we've kind of filled the gap with people that we don't have the skills in, right? Mm. We can have lots of ideas, but it's been, it's, there's, a, there's a solid team of people that have brought this to where it is today. Yeah. We can't take all the credit for it. Right, yeah. Definitely I think it's like... <laughs> Anyone can have an, an idea to do something, but to actually implement that idea takes so much hard work. You know, it's been a huge you know, learning, learning curve, curve and very much like, you know, we've kind of evolved as we've sort of progressed. And I think the you know, a big turning point is when we became officially registered as a, as a charity in the UK. That whole process took a lot of paperwork. Yeah, what does that look like to create a, a charity foundation like that? So, uh, with the UK Charities Commission, they basically have a four charity models. Um, you have to kind of choose the one that works best for how you're going to operate your charity. You have like a charitable foundation where we are. Uh, there's like charitable companies, charitable organisations, uh, and like trust funds and stuff like that, basically. Um, so we had to pick one of those uh, foundations. So, so we had to really have an idea of, we, we had an idea of what we wanted to do, but we had to kind of change it a little bit to fit in to not, not change it a little bit, but kind of um, like sharpen up the edges like mm -hmm. a little bit to make it, because it was a bit, this is kind of what we want to do. 
And then they said, you can do it this way, you can do it this way, you can do it this way. And we picked the one that was best for us. Then we had to write a, uh, a charitable constitution, like a governing document, which says about how the charities run. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's not terms and conditions, that's the wrong way of looking at it, but it's, if this happens, this is what we do. Like, when the charity, like, when we communicate, when we have the group of trustees get together, this is how often they get together, this is the sort of the way the meetings are structured, uh, this is how funds will be donated, it, even things down to if um, it gets to the point where we wanted to wind up, how are we going to close the charity down, how are we going to allocate remaining funds, uh, it's, it's just to keep us honest, basically, mm. and uh, yeah, it's, it's just it's just a guideline of how we have to run, and then we have to we have to stick to that. So the charities commission give us a a, uh, a template, and then we have to then write our own government do government document that fits within the template that we need to fit in to qualify to be like a charity. There's there's a lot of hoops to jump through. Like yeah, I think the the UK is the the heaviest regulated country in the world for charity applications. What was that feeling like when you got the charity? You got a number, right? Like an yeah, organization yeah. charity number for that. Mm. That made it real, I guess. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. It's like, I was just just checking my emails one day. I could do it every day. I just looked for, oh, I want from them. Click, your application has been received. Okay, cool, your application has been accepted. You are now officially a charity. Like, here's your registration number. It's like, ah. <laughs> like, everything, it made it real. It turned it, like, if I get hit by a bus and Dan gets hit by a bus, it's still there. Yeah. It's not an idea that's in our head. Yeah. And if something happened to us, it would die with us. Like, it's, it's a thing by itself now. We've, we've created something. It's not just an idea. It, it has, it exists. It's, it's written down. There's, yeah, it, yeah. It's, 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 it's a creature unto itself. It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't kind of just live yeah, it's, it's like, like Yeah, it's like, can, it's, it's like Nick said. I think it, when, he, when he put that to me in those terms, it was like, that makes a lot of sense. It's like, can we, can we get this to a point where if we create something and something happens to us, can it carry on? Is it all laid out where people can just follow what we've you know, set up kind of thing? And that was, that was sort of the turning point really, where once we had that registration, we could move forward with the, the foundation. Because mm. without that registration, you know, we're not yeah, in a position where we could. A lot of early frustration where we had, we had ideas and we knew what we wanted to do. And, and it was great, but we still didn't really have anything tangible. Mm. It was, yeah, this is great, this is a great idea. And we had lots of feedback saying, oh, this is an amazing idea, this is brilliant. From artists saying they'd like to be involved from very, very early days, like, we still weren't really sure what we were doing. Mm. Kind of, we, had, we had the idea, but we didn't have any of the details. We had great feedback all the way through. Um, and then when, when we boiled it down to it, I said, what have we actually got? And it's like, well, I haven't actually got anything. We've, we've got an idea and we've got some people to go, yeah, good idea. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and, and that's about it. But when it, now we've got something that like, we, we can hold it, we can touch it, we can see it. If you Google it, it exists. Like, there's, a, there's a list of registered charities in the UK. We're on there. Like, we have a, we have like a, there's a list of notable charitable foundations on Wikipedia. Like, someone's added us to that. Like, it's, it's happening. Like, it's yeah, really, really it, happening. It, it, it's, a, it's a thing. Yeah, it, it's, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, yeah, it's, we've, it's, it's been a lot of work. Yeah. yeah. To more, get everything. More work than I ever imagined, to be totally honest. It really was. <laughs> we, we, you know, we, like, we, um, we had this kind of idea. It was, it was on the 9th of December, so I know that's when I was in Poland with Amy, my girlfriend. And we thought, right, this is a really good idea. Let's get this launched on the 6th of January. Oh, like two, one month afterwards? Or? Right, it was like five weeks away. It was like, yeah. let's, let's, get it, let's get it launched, because then Christmas would have died down a little bit. And then we thought, oh yeah, Christmas, people in like a giving spirit, because it's that time of year. Yeah. And we'll just, we'll just get everyone involved into this massive launch video, and we'll just be like, bang, here we are, like in three weeks' time, and everyone will love it. And it'd be, it'd be a really easy thing to do. Then we kind of got home, and the first thing I did was look at how long it takes to register a charity. I was like, okay, that seems like a fair bit of work, but I could probably get it done tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I, was like, I, was like, I haven't got anything to do in the morning. I just, well, I just worked through the night. And then um, <clears throat> we had a meeting with uh, John Askew, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't we? We, he we sort had, of said, like, we, we're we, we, looking to get this live in, like, three weeks, and he just went... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> three weeks? <laughs> he said, the like, funniest thing was, we went, we went to his office, which isn't far from here, and we kind of pitched the idea to him, and he said, yep, great, so you're going to want to do this, you're going to want to do that, and you're going to want to market and campaign. Do you have a marketing guy? And you're probably looking at six, eight months to get this to the table. And we're like, yeah, cheers, John. We got in the car, and we're like, <laughs> we're going to do this next week. Yeah, <laughs> six you wanted to do it right away, right? Yeah. Who is this guy? Like... And, we're like, and then the more we kind of did it, the more we realised, no, he's right. 
and he's really, yeah. really right. And it took us like 10 months in the end, from, de from day one to, to getting registered as the charity. And I it's going to be like 14 months by the time we've launched. I think the enthusiasm was there from, the, from day one. Mm. And that was like what was driving us in kind of maybe yeah, naivety in the early us. stages. Yeah, being able to follow right. through, right? Yeah. But I think something like this, it has to come from the heart. It has to come from a passion to do good in the world and, and for the right reasons. So as long as that's driving you forward and you're, you, know, you are learning on the way, um, you learn, you know, you, we, we've learned so much about so many things and working with some of the talented people that we're able to work with with the team. You know, I've learned so much about things I didn't know before. So it's been a really interesting mm, process. Right. But tell, tell us a little bit more about the whole concept because now you have it set, right? You have the, the charity number and you're kind of ready to, to get going. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the concept. It was really interesting coming up with it because we're like, we want to we want to raise money, we want to raise lots of money, we want to, go to use things, things we're passionate about, things like music um, we're passionate about, but uh, which charity do we give to? Like, how do we pick? Do, and we, we had, this is probably one of our biggest discussions, like, do we have a charity per year? Do we have a charity of the month? And um, so, so the, ba the basic concept was artists donate one gig fee or one performance per year to the charity. And I was like, do we let the artist pick where the money goes? Do we let the fans pick where the money goes? Do we pick where the money goes? Like, everyone's got causes that are dear to them. So, like, personally, well, like, with, um, you've done stuff for uh, British Heart Foundation, haven't you, because of Jules's dad. Mm -hmm. um, I've personally done stuff for, uh, uh, so there's, like, an air ambulance place locally. It's like a helicopter to get people <coughs> to the hospital. I've raised a lot of money for those previously in the past. I've done things for like cancer research with Millen nurses and things like that because like when my granddad was ill with cancer, like they really looked after him. So that's close to my heart. You've got stuff that are close to your heart where you've worked with disabled children and things before. Mm -hmm. And like none of us are wrong. We, you care about the things you care about. So how yeah. how do we kind of get that and get everyone involved and everyone interested and make there something for everyone there? So. We kind of banded the idea around of having yeah like a, a charity of the year, like we pick a charitable purpose, and that's the one for this year. Then next year, this one, next year, that one. We do one a month, we do one every three months, and eventually we settled on. We're taking we we'll take the, uh, the 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 donation from the artist, and then the artist also tells us where he wants the money to go. So we donate uh, fifty percent of their donation uh, on behalf of the artist to his chosen charity. So he gets. Uh, so that so he or she or the artist gets um, some of their money or half of their money going to where they want it to go, so they can they can have an impact on a smaller scale. And then uh, what what's left of the money then comes to uh, the, the, the the charitable foundation or the pot. So and then we get all the, all the donations, all that's left over from these donations um, goes into one big pot. And then we let the fans decide on a. Um, a scheduled basis, uh, where it's going to be like incremental basis when we hit 50,000 and 100,000 and then 250,000 on, on incremental basis, we have, we have a vote and they say, based on these charitable purposes, and a charitable purpose is like um, relief of poverty, if there's, if there's a global, like if there's a natural disaster or something like that, uh, it could be animal welfare, it could be uh, water aid, it could be, it's like um, something like that. So then, <clears throat> then the fans vote on the charitable purpose. Um, and then the then once they've decided on a purpose, we will then take that um, that purpose and look for charities that are doing outstanding work in their current field, and then give them donations. And the beautiful thing about the fan vote is, it's like without the fans, what is there? Like there there still be artists that are passionate about music and producing music, but if no one wants to pay for it, there's no industry. Um, so it's the artists kind of empowering their fans to make a difference in the world. They're giving money to where they want it to go and they're also giving the remainder to their fans and their fans are going, yep, this is what we want to do as a whole, as an industry, as a community, should I say, not an industry. This is what we want to make a difference in the world. And the artists are going, yep, here you go, fans. I'm going to empower you to make a difference in the world because you've supported me, you've built my career, you come to my gigs, you put food on my table, I'm going to give back to you and then you're going to give back to the world on my behalf. It's just like a, a beautiful, complete circle of excellence. That's what I'm gonna call it. How has the <laughs> how has the support been so far? It's been it's been like really positive overall. Um, I think it's been 
easier to align with artists that I'm close to from my own connections within the industry and be able to sit down with them face to face or over dinner or just have a general chat with them, you know, one to one and be able to say what the, the goal is and what we're trying to achieve with the foundation. I think with artists I've been able to be in that environment with, it's been really, really successful. Um, I think the higher we've gone up the industry has been where things have been like, you know, to begin with, because we're not a tested cons we're not a tested foundation, we've got no proof in our pudding as to say such, you know, is once we go out there and we do what we're saying we're gonna do, I think we can, you know, align ourselves more realistically and probably with some of these bigger artists because they have to think about their brand and they have to think about, you know, we're brand new and we're setting out, are they really going to get involved in an organisation like That's us to begin untested. with when yeah. it's untested? And that was a kind of a learning process for me, sort of thinking, yeah, we've got this great idea, which has been told to us by many people in the industry that it's a great idea, it's, it's brilliant, and, and all these, these words. And that kind of fuels you to go further with it, to speak to these people, and then when you sort of don't get a reply or you don't hear back. Um, but we've had some really positive encouragement on the way. You know, Tiesto's manager, for instance, wrote us a really nice email and said that this all looks like it's clearly coming from the heart. It looks like it's a great um, you know, vision and we'd like to hear more about you in the future as you yeah, progress. Yeah. And that's positive. That's like a great way for us to be like, okay, that's, you know, let's do what we're trying to say, we we'll do what we're saying we're going to do and then let's go back to them and see what they yeah, say. So stay, stay in touch, keep us updated. And then uh, they, they didn't say no. <laughs> yeah. they, they didn't say nah, that sounds rubbish. Like, you haven't got any. You haven't got a proof of concept yet. You haven't done anything. This is very new, <clears> and <throat> for artists of like top, top, top level to be involved, it's kind of like a, an instant seal of approval because of the the exposure it will get. Yeah. So walk your talk. Do what you say you're going to do. Let us know, and and then maybe, yeah. which is yeah. which is the best you ask for. But what we found is, put us in a room with someone and give us five minutes and just talk to them and. I don't think we've had one negative f feedback, have we? Not from someone face to face. No, it's like yeah, that opportunity. Maybe, maybe, maybe people are just being polite. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm six foot five and nearly seventeen stone. They're going to be nice to me, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's that amplifying that community vibe that dance music has, that togetherness feeling, that family feeling, family yeah. feeling, that happiness feeling, and let's you know do it in a way where we can actually have a huge positive impact on the world yeah. and on a grand scale. Because um, he's this massive family, just give the world a hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so true. I think, it's, yeah. I think dance music. You know, it, it's. It, it, I feel like it. What what sort of when I looked at Google and you type dance music and charity, you get a couple of pages of links. A few artists like Tiesto, above and beyond. I think Calvin and Dead Mouse did a charity show and a few other things here and there, but there's nothing like that's really. Out there, more. that's yeah, that, that, can, that everyone can be part of. You can always do more, right? And the, you know, the fans can buy these T-shirts, and these T-shirt profits can go to the, to the, to give them back to the world. You know, the artists can be involved by by donating shows. You know, this can this can all work with everyone being involved together. Do you have any plans on how you're gonna follow it up? Uh, how to uh, follow the donations up to see if if or what changed after you uh, donate money to uh, to somewhere so so we'd like to take a sorry uh, Go on. yeah we'd like to just what we'd really like to do is the whole part of this foundation is being able to document and, and show people what we've done take a film crew with us with the team with some some of the fans you know um, <laughs> i would be up for that <laughs> definitely yeah, just like let's you know if we raise a couple of hundred thousand dollars for instance let's go to somewhere where we've if it's donated to water aid perhaps let's go and see how much that's made a difference let's see how people's lives have made a difference you know have, have benefited because of this rather than like nick said just a, a lump sum or a check going into another bank account and there's no way of finding out what's been done with it i think that that feedback process back to the community is really important how much do you think uh the dance uh, music community can offer I think when you look at the scale of what we could achieve with this from just, you know, artists donating just one gig per year and the fans being involved with merchandise and donations, I think it, it can offer a hell of a lot. When you think about a multi-billion dollar industry, the numbers, you know, could be huge. And I think as we grow as a foundation and we were able to reach out to 
multi genres and multi you know talented artists and so on and so on and they can see the work we're doing and I think it could be really interesting. So for example, let's say you've got a hundred DJs that used to donate a thousand pounds. I don't I don't know. Uh, what what the average is? It's, it's not published. It's not kind of data, but there are definitely people that are in far more times. Like, yeah, like a th a thousand, you get you get a hundred people donate a thousand pounds. That's a hundred thousand pounds. That's a lot of money. You, know, yeah. you can you can make some. You can really impact some lives with that that type of money, right? And that's not unrealistic. Mm. So I think we said yeah. we'd like we'd like to. I think quarter of a million is what we said initially, isn't it? We'd like to get to in year um, one if we yeah, can. No, yeah, no, that's dollars. Because our, our marketing guys, um, <coughs> a guy called Jason, is a really awesome guy, who's based in the states. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, he's he's really bought into this and he's helped us a lot. He's got a, a bit of a corporate background. He's working with us for free because he believes in it and he wants to he wants to make a difference in the world. And um, yeah, I think we set on quarter of a million dollars as our first. Like that'd be our, that'd be like, like a it, huge, yeah. huge, huge like a milestone. Kind of milestone. Where we can, that will be to the point where we've gone. That would, that would be success. That's like, we could, we could raise a thousand or, or 10,000 or, or 50,000, it would be amazing. But like, once we, if you've hit that milestone, that's like, shit, we've done something real good here. <laughs> <laughs> like any, any money raised is better than no money raised, obviously, but mm. that's, that's kind think, of like that yeah, I think, ah, moment where yeah, I think, we, we kind of, it's not unrealistic, but it's still a huge goal to hit. How does it feel right now? Because you've been working on this for, for 10 months, right? Getting it <laughs> ready. Well, no, January, February. 12 yeah. months. Yeah. Just, 12 months. Just over, just over a year. December, it, yeah, Dece yeah. December was when we had that initial, let's do something with this yeah. idea. And now it's February. And like, now it's yeah, kind of, so. you've done all the um, bureaucracy stuff. You got all the, uh, yeah, the yeah, permits the, the and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Now it's a case of, you know, just it going live to the industry and, the fans, you know, see it, what we're doing. More artists see what we're doing in yeah. different genres and, you know, the opportunity to network and speak to more artists and grow this, you know, foundation. I think the interesting thing is, is when we work with an artist, when they decide that that's the show specifically they'd like to donate to us, um, as long as everything we do for that one show is works really well that can apply to every single other artist in the industry in theory and of course you know the higher you go up the more it's going to you know you're going to work have to work more with closer with some of those high profile artists but if as long as the message is right and the message is togetherness and giving back to the world you know it's it really can grow into something bigger the, the possibilities to raise large amounts of money like life-changing amounts of money isn't unrealistic with, with, with the sort of what, yeah, I mean, with, 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 the, with the scale of the industry if you get one yeah. percent of that like one percent half a percent mm. of that you've, you've raised millions even like so. 0. <laughs> even 0. 0.1 yeah. percent, you, know, <laughs> you, you get 0. 0.1 like, percent you've probably raised six or seven figures and like yeah mm, right that's lots <laughs> i couldn't imagine raising that much money for a charity and the kind of differences you'd see that money making would be yeah that'd be amazing to see yeah i think the big, big thing in this for me was transitioning from that desire personally to do as much as I possibly could for charity through my own music and channeling that into, it's not what you know myself can do with, with my own music, it's what everyone can do if we all just work together. Yeah. That's, that's where I really sort of felt like this, this could really work and happen if people shared that outlook. Mm. And if we make it easy for them, as well. Yeah, right. And that's, saying, that's the key. We want, to, we want to do this. Here's how you can be involved. Here's how easy it is. This is what you've got to do. It's, 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 yeah. very, it's very little. Give us permission to use your logo. Pick a gig mm. that you want to choose, and then pick a charity you want your money to go to, and that's it. Yeah, we'll we'll nice. take care of everything else for yeah. you. It's not a difficult process, yeah. and I think by having something universal, which fans and artists can all be part of, it takes away any sort of dynamics of, oh, that artist is only doing it for some sort of PR stunt reasons on his personal page or all those things. And yeah, I've now you're all happen. doing it together. Right? Everybody's doing exactly. it together with, with a universal foundation. You know, it's, it's, it, it does eliminate that whole dynamic of, let's, you know, do something like this to raise more album yeah. sales or I've got an album like coming out next week. How can I get in the headlines? Yeah. Like, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, it's, it's publicity and marketing. Right, and, right. But 
if you're gonna if you're gonna give loads of money to charity for, for, for as, a, as a publicity stunt, amazing, <laughs> go for it. I don't yeah. care. I don't care what your motives are. You're giving money to charity. That's that's brilliant. But um, but there, then you also get the skeptical people that goes, oh, we wouldn't have done that if his album wasn't coming up. But you, just, you remove that. You make it. You make it a level playing field. And even if that is the case, I don't care personally what someone's motives are for donating, as long as they're donating, because then they're they're making a difference whether they get a personal benefit from that or not is rather than just feeling good. Like, so it's all about the togetherness. Yeah, oh, def Purity. definitely. And yeah. so together much, with music, right? right. So, so there's, there's so much more. I think, look at how happy people are when they're at gigs. You've got thousands of people jumping up and down, smiling, laughing, dancing. Particularly, the, there's like, like trans families all over the world, aren't there? And mm -hmm. there's like, the community is so tight. You bring that together. The community's already there. You've just got to kind of, we're just kind of putting something together to channel that because the, the, the goodwill and the feeling and the happiness and all that that as fans you know you get from dance music at the outside world not see we're, we're going to channel that into something positive to make the world set up and go, actually it's 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 really cool like <laughs> it's, it's a really it's a really good thing that's going on here and it, it, it sheds a positive light on the industry it might bring more fans to the industry you never know i'm speculating there but I, I can't, I, and no way I've looked at it and I've thought about it and I've spent countless hours thinking about it. I can't put a negative spin on it at all. Mm. Maybe I've got rose tinted glasses and I'm sure that they'll, they'll, they'll live <laughs> it. I say maybe, definitely. <laughs> like, uh, I think, I, I, I think no, no, it's no, no, very no. hard to put a negative spin on no, no, someone's no, no, no. desire to do. I mean, our intentions good for, are good. Right. Aren't they? It's yeah. like we're, not, we're doing this for free, we're not getting paid for this. Yeah. We're, not, we're not making loads of money out of this, we're not going to be famous for this. Like. I want nothing from it other than to do more than I could do by myself. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that, that's the team mentality. Yeah. Yeah. That's echoed through the team. You know, yeah. the team of every single person on the team is kindly offered to work for the first year for free. Yeah. They wanna, they wanna, they've offered their services for pro bono to try and get this foundation to a point where, you know, may, we, we might need a team to, yeah. to expand because we can give more to the world. Mm. We, can, we can raise mm. more money, you know. When and, you know. obviously charities need to be run, we could justify employing people yeah. or something along those lines then yeah then maybe but right now we're there's what seven or eight of us i think it's probably about ten of us all, ten of us all like, together yeah. we're all working for free on the same vision of we can do more together than we can by ourselves and if we can kind of spread that on mass en mass to <laughs> spread that across the, the whole community if ten of us can do something like this, imagine what a hundred of us, or a thousand of us, yeah. or ten thousand of us, or a hundred thousand of us could do together. Mm. It's yes, yeah, a hundred thousand people gave a pound. Right, right. I've always <laughs> had that. Yeah, had that outlook. You know, if, I, if I'm going to put a pound in the charity pot anyway, I might put two pound in. Depends if I'm in a good mood. No, but like, <laughs> <laughs> no. But you, you, put, you put you put your change in. If you if you get everyone doing that together for one or one or a specific or a group of causes then how much money we could raise together is just, uh, it keeps coming back to it, but the, 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 more, the more people involved, the, the greater there is to, to do great things. I, I have a question for you. So we, we met at Lumi and we spoke about this, this the foundation. Yeah, Lumi Beach yeah. last year. Yeah. What, what was it about the foundation that made you come here to, to see us? Because you're very, you're very busy, very in demand. And it's um you've come to swindon yeah, yeah i'm in swindon no i mean <laughs> you've it's um, interviewed a lot of people and met a lot of people honestly yeah it's so simple like the idea is ridiculously simple and it's so easy to take in and there's no way i've also been trying to think about negative or not negative but trying to right, think about right. but i can't really come up with anything because mm. it's very logical or it's very very logic and it's very simple mm. And it's just right there, you know? And it's together, and it's not for PR, it's not like I'm throwing out millions because here's a DJ voting blah 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 yeah, or something. Yeah. It's more like, I'm part of this, this is what we do. Yeah. And yeah, we spoke, um, we spoke at Lumi, and the idea that you had and that you transferred, I spoke to you as well, was actually pretty I clear already back, already back then. You didn't, you didn't, Dan spoke. <laughs> yeah, Dan, uh, me and, you like and that, I spoke, yeah. At Lumi, so Dan, let's let the man talk, please. Yeah, we spoke a lot, but I took it in, so you know? Yeah. I took it in and I processed, yeah. or I just listened to what you had to say, and it made sense. Because there is nothing like this either. Mm. 
No, it was just a, a, a combined effort from a community to give back to the world. And it's just, it's a very pure and sort of agendaless yeah. idea. I think also it's just one gig. Yeah, exactly. A year. Yeah. You know, artists are out there doing 30, 40, 50, 60, yeah. 70 gigs, you know. 70 gigs a year, Jesus, that's a lot. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, but imagine that, how how that. yeah, it might not matter to them, but imagine how much it would matter to to yeah. donating and to going to something else that don't have money, that don't have water, that don't have mm. yeah, the stuff that people need. Yeah. yeah. So I'm actually I'm proud to be here to talk to you guys about this. That means a lot. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm thrilled to see this go live and to see it grow as well. And I'm proud to be part of spreading the message for the Apollo 8 Foundation as well. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate that a lot.